but I'm saying like bottom of the barrel, like from the gutter, from nothing yeah. Yeah. To, to what I have now, like yeah. with my freaking hands, my hard work, like that gives me so much yeah. freaking pride that I built this life with these two. Yeah. Hard hands and hard work. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard hands and hard work. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Welcome to the Fuel Hunt Show. What's going on, Eagles? Welcome to the Fuel Hunt Show. I'm Joey. I'm here with Drew, and today we have a very, very special guest, a triple OG of the Fuel Hunt community. Like, triple OG. Oh, yeah. OG, one OG, of, OG. One of the, the first ever Fuel Hunt athletes. Like, I think it was like uh, Sean and Shane. Right. Like, and someone that has really been with us on every episode of the Fuel Hunt Show. <laughs> Pretty much on every episode of the Fuel Hunt Show. Shane Burgos is sitting in front of Shane Burgos. His likeness I will on say, the backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very badass picture. That is a badass show. picture, it but it's honestly making me miss my long hair, so I'm like, oh, I'm a little, a little mad about it. That's <laughs> yeah, funny. Um, so what, what else, uh, besides Triple OG of the community, Pro Fighter, uh, CFFC, UFC, PFL, right? Did I miss any? Uh, I think that Ring of Combat. Ring of Combat, <laughs> Ring okay. Combat. Uh, husband, father, girl dad, fellow girl dad. You got me beat by... By one yep. so far, I'm tap I'm tapped out. I'm, tapped out. I'm, I'm tapped out at three. I mean, okay, I, I was right. tapped out at two, two, and then she said, "Never mind." And then she came out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fellow fellow girl dad, uh, and one of the few, oh, yeah. man, one of the few. Tough as, um, and we'll get into it, tough as nails. I've never seen anybody leave it out there in the octagon as much as you do, and like right. I can, I've never seen you. I've never seen you fight live, but. I watch yeah. your fights and I can just feel everything you're giving. And I don't say that lightly. I've never said that really to anybody else. Like I can feel you giving everything when you have nothing left when oh, you're in there. That's, so it's exactly how I feel. Like I, it's every time I go in there, it's do or die. Yeah. That's how, that's how I treat it. Yeah. 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 It's, it was funny because I watched um, your documentary, which we'll get into, probably skipping ahead a little bit, but we'll, watch, um, we'll talk about your documentary. But I watched it, and in the beginning, I don't know if it was your first pro fight, I think it may have been, uh, where you did, like, the signature Shane thing where you went up to the cage with that, like, open mouth yell, and you were just like, <laughs> ah, you know? And I, was I did like, it a couple of times, so I don't remember which one yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, but it was really early on in yeah. your career. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, it's super, super dope. <laughs> yeah, it's like when he is out there, you feel the emotion and the energy and like yep. you're just happy like we were talking about the last episode he's just happy to be there doing what he loves yep and uh my one the, my favorite picture of you after it's like a stock photo now of like getty images or something but <laughs> the one where you're just like staring at the camera with your with your oh, mouth yeah. that's the one that's the yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's the josh emmett fight that was when we fought in front of like 10 people yeah, yeah. And josh emmett there's like you hear a pin drop in there yeah that was that was a, ver a wild experience it was during covid, COVID. It, was, it was the second event after uh, after uh so that happened. was at the Apex. Yeah, the Apex. Apex. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, Apex. Yeah. How? Let's talk about that for a second. So <laughs> you're saying it was a really weird experience. Like, how did it affect your mentality going in? Like, my thinking is like you were acutely aware of like what was going yeah, on around yeah, you, which was nothing. There's nobody was in there. <laughs> yeah. But like from a mindset standpoint, you're still yeah. No, it, like during the fight, it doesn't matter if there's fifty thousand yeah. people or like it was ten people there. It, it, all that crap goes out the window and I'm focused solely on the guy that's in front of me. Yeah. But uh, I remember walking out and being backstage, I was like, this is so freaking weird. Even like the whole setup, like you get rushed in, you get rushed out after the fight. Like they basically kick you out right away. Your coaches yeah. get rushed out and a uh, lineman fall on the carpet me too. That, so that was made it a little bit more weird because I couldn't get there early. So my coaches had to go, then I had to come by myself. So mm -hmm. the whole thing was a very weird process. But again, as soon as the referee says go, all that goes out the yeah. window. And, it, yeah. just on us. And, it, and then it honestly like, that that fight deserved a crowd. It really, it really did. Like, mm -hmm. I had so much fun in that fight. I couldn't imagine if there was a crowd there. It was like yeah. nominated for fight of the year. If there was a crowd there, it would have been even right. Yeah. It would have been crazier. I feel like that yeah. both yeah. of us were feeding off the energy that we were giving each other. Yeah. But I can't imagine if we had fifty thousand people there. Yeah, uh, screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's like I said, it's a testament to like you leaving it like all out there man like even when gas tank is is there's obviously an effect on your gas tank like you're leaving it all out there like it's do or die like you said like you're prepared to you're prepared to die in there dude yeah yeah and then having three daughters now makes it a little bit uh I, i'm i'm getting right to that edge now where i'm like i definitely don't want to die i got kids yeah, raised yeah. right now uh -huh. but but uh but i'm, I'm you see the, my last fight too i fight I, it's just one of those things you really can't i can't explain it to you 
Yeah. And it's the corniest thing. Like when you hear it back, like you probably heard it a million times. Oh, it's a, it's a switch. When I get in the cage, I'm a different person. Yeah, it sounds corny, and I'm, but I'm going to steal the cliche, and I'm going to say I don't really know how to explain that, but I know once I get in there and it's time to go, I, it's time to perform, I mm-hmm. just... Yeah, the, it's a switch. The, it's a, it's switch. a switch. switch. It really is a switch. Yeah, yeah. It's a switch. We were yeah. just talking about flipping the switch earlier. It almost um, realistically might not be even a difference for, between the apex and the the stadiums or whatever because I imagine that when it is go time, the ref, like you said, reference is go, it just feels like like it probably just tunnel vision, tunnel vision, yeah. and just everything closes off, and it's just it really is just you and him, and maybe your coaches faintly in the background. Exactly, exactly. But that that one was weirder because I heard his coaches, my coaches, uh, and yeah. I heard the commentators talking at the same time. So like, this is so so strange. So, yeah. so I didn't even think about the commentators. Yeah, so yeah you could you could hear yep, them. You can clear, hear clear as that. There's time, been times when I'm in the, in the, like the fight with the with the crowd, and I could hear the commentators. So. Uh, then they, it was empty like this and you, you could hear him talking yeah, yeah that is so wild. weird <laughs> it was like imagine a UFC fight going on I right, know. Like right there I know that's I what it was like a private imagine. showing basically like a private showing yep. for the commentators yep yep yeah wild dude they, wild. they're still doing the apex now right? I think they said that they're done doing that now I think they okay. just said that they're done doing that but they're, they're, they're gonna finish the rest of their book but they're gonna start going uh, through right. yeah got you got you so let's let's talk about let's talk about the beginning of the journey because you have a remarkable story that began your journey in, in MMA, mixed martial arts. Um, what was life growing up? You grew up where? I grew up in the Bronx. I moved out of the Bronx when I was 12 years old. Okay, so actually you spent, you spent a good amount of time yeah. in the Bronx then. Yeah, yeah it's funny. Yeah. I, not, not, a, not a very good neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Avenue and Monroe Projects. Then I moved from the Monroe, Monroe Projects to Monroe, New York, actually. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. It's so no, that happens. In, in, in the Bronx, is that... You were not fighting. No, nothing. No, no training. Okay, no uh, training. Uh, nothing. No, I had no clue. I was only twelve. I didn't know. It wasn't the only sport I was into was like WWE back then. Yeah. Which I which I was obsessed with. I thought it was cool. Okay. And so I got to like eighth grade. Then I was like, oh, this is clearly like ridiculously fake. Now and then I got over <laughs> right. it. But that's when I found like literally like segued from like me being a huge WWE fan to mm-hmm. to the Ultimate Fighter starting and me being like. What the hell? What the hell is this? Yeah, it sounds. Like you're talking about cliches like flipping switches. Another cliche that we say all the time. Sounds cliche until it's not. Everything happens for a reason. Oh, yeah. Right? So, Huge believer in that. Yeah. Huge yeah. believer in that. So you leave the Bronx. You go to Monroe, New York. Much different than the Bronx, I got to imagine. 100%. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Night, and, night and day. Literally night and day difference. Yeah. It's two, two different upbringings. And that's where you start watching yeah. Ultimate Fighter? Yeah. So it was seventh grade, actually. I saw the... the uh, UFC Unleashed. It was a mm-hmm. remember they had the show. They show highlights basically. Yep. So it was Matt Hughes versus Carl. I told the story that a million times because this is like I'll never forget this. Matt Hughes versus Carl Newton. Matt Hughes gets caught in a triangle choke, picks up Carl Newton, puts him in the cage. He's chilling there for a second, and then he actually goes out. But when he goes out, he slams Newton on his head, knocks him out, and he wins the title. And I was like, by myself, I was like, what the hell? He just knocked it. I was like, what? you just slammed this dude and won a belt. I'm like looking around, like nobody else is watching. It's just me. I was like, all right. And, get, I was, and then it was a uh, it was a marathon up until the Ultimate Fighter was premiering. So I binge watched the entire thing. Ultimate yeah. Fighter started, and I was a big Contender fan. Remember, remember the show Contender? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loved that show. The boxing show. Me, and my yeah. mom and dad used to watch that all the time. So it was kind of like the same kind of a uh, format. Yeah. So going into the Ultimate Fighter, I was like, this is even more fun than the Contender because it's. MMA, you got punches, kicks, elbows. So yeah, right from that episode, right into Ultimate Fighter, and then it was like, dude, love at first sight. Huge fan ever since. And then that's why, like, I'm like a diehard Matt Hughes and uh, Rashad Evans fan because yeah. Rashad won that season. Matt Hughes was one of the coaches that season. Yeah. 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 So what? Uh, so you're watching it. Like, how do you make the jump from spectator to practitioner? I like, never, I never thought I would. Honestly, I was like, this is so cool. This is, I love this. I, I'm never gonna do it, but this is like awesome. And again, I, I like the uh, the contender. So I was like, maybe I do boxing or something like that. My uncle was a boxer. I was like, maybe I'll get into boxing. But I was like, uh-huh. that stuff with the elbows and the knees and the kicks to the face. I was like, I'm not crazy enough to do that. <laughs> I was like, I can't. Yeah. I, I'll never do that stuff. But Look this, where this, we are. yeah. <laughs> so then, and then in ninth grade uh towards the end of the year my friend's like yo there's a there's a gym they're doing like a one month trial uh you want, you want to do it they do jiu-jitsu and kickboxing i was like oh what yeah sure he's like where? i was like where is he he's like, it's like five minutes down the road i was like no way i said like, what's called he's like it's tiger showman's i was like i thought that was a karate school mm-hmm. they're like yeah i thought so too but they say it says kickboxing and jiu-jitsu i was like all right let's go try it out yeah we go there and it was kickboxing and grappling yeah. it was again from the First time on the mat, did my first grappling class. I was going with my friends. I ended up tapping them out. I was like, this is the most fun thing I ever, like, yeah. fun. There's, there's, there's fun things that are like, yeah, this is fun. But this was like, oh, my God, I can't wait. So, yep. so, so it was a month trial. I came every single day that the gym was open for the entire oh, I month. I love that, dude. Yeah, love every it. single day. Like, I love ob- it. Obsessed. And then it was time to sign up. 
Yeah. It was expensive. My dad was like, Bills, you got three sons already. He was like, I, mm -hmm. I don't think we can afford it. Yeah, so I was like, oh, come on. I was like, oh, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm, my parents spoiled me a little bit coming mm -hmm. up. So I was like, oh, they really can't afford this. This is going to suck. And then the sensei, Sensei Monte, shout out. Um, yeah. He actually was like, I'll give you a deal. You clean the gym at night and we'll give That's you a huge discount. Wow. I was like, done, done deal. Amazing, done. man. So, and then, then <laughs> it's like, the rest is history, honestly. Yeah, like, yeah. Is that, is that, is he still your sensei today? No, now he's my daughter sensei. Wow. Which is funny, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing, well, like, dude. Full circle now. Now my daughter trains under him, so it's pretty wow. cool. It doesn't yeah. surprise me that you've been like, you know, Team Tiger since the very beginning. Literally. You're, you're <laughs> very loyal. Like, yeah. what I can get from you and what I know of you, you're very loyal. You seem like a very loyal man. So, Team Tiger since the very beginning. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that friend that got you to do the trial quest still training today? No, nah, he doesn't train anymore. He doesn't yeah. train anymore. That's funny uh, that works. Yeah. Yeah. They, they all fell off. It was me and two other friends. They fell off and I kept going. Yeah. But so they're that, part of the story, so. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. a, that's yeah. amazing. Like when you hit the mats, there's another community member. She was in a um, couple, actually, it might have been last summer. I say a couple months ago, but time kind of collapses mm -hmm. and flies, right? So, yep. and um, she had that, uh, shout out Shelly. She had that same type of feeling like when she first practiced jiu-jitsu, she was like, this is what I meant to do. Dude, that, like, this is it right here. here exactly, that's exactly yeah. how I felt. Like, it was like, oh crap, I'm 15 years old and I'm, I feel like I, I found a little bit of a purpose here. Like, yeah. yeah. Looking back, I can think that. Like in the moment, I'm just thought, I just thought it was fun. But now like looking back, I'm like, oh, that, no, you just literally found your purpose. And I was like, yeah. remember, yeah. I mean, fast forwarding a little bit. I started training 15 in around May, I think it was May or end of May into June. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward until around, I think it was uh, November-ish, mm -hmm. I found out I had to get surgery for my spine. Yep. And then the doctor tells me, you're not going to go train anymore. Yep. So I'm like, I, I've been training for six months. Yep. I was like, now you're going to tell me I can't do it anymore? So, you know, that's the thing. Like, this sounds like a fairy tale, but they really don't exist. Like you walk in, you find your purpose and then yeah. you just ride off into the sunset. You know what I mean? Nah, but yeah. not nah, immediate, a, yeah. immediate hurdle. Dude. Yeah, like, yes. And not just like a hurdle, like, oh, I got to figure this out. It's like a hurdle. Like I have to go under the knife. There's a risk here that not only will I not be able to train, I won't be able to walk after I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So when did like, so scoliosis, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is a curvature of your spine. Of your spine so basically right? my spine looked like a question mark. So when, did you know that you had that yeah. going into training? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I knew I had it in like sixth grade or something like that. But okay. It was only like a 20 so it's still degree. late. Yeah, yeah but, only, but only like a 20 degree curve, which is like, okay, that's not, you just keep an eye on it. It's manageable. Like you do the test in school and they yeah. noticed it in school. Yeah. Um, seventh grade came, it went up a couple of degrees and then like eighth, ninth grade came and it shot up from like 20 something degrees to 49 degrees. Holy and that's when they're like, oh, okay, never mind. We can't do the bridge or any of that. Uh, this is what's going to happen. It's getting worse and it's getting worse fast. When, like, cause I hit a growth spurt while I hit the growth spurt, yeah. that's what happened. Oh, so, the, so that's what it like accelerated. Yeah, exactly. It. Ah, okay, exactly. okay. So my growth spurt hit, I, I went to 5'11 mm -hmm. in like a couple, that, basically from eighth grade to ninth grade, I shot up like four or five inches. Gotcha. And then, uh, he told me, he's like, you got two options. You could do nothing, but what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to walking it's getting worse fast or you can get surgery and well the parallel between that like you know you got a question mark for a spine which <laughs> then puts a massive question mark on like your, the rest of your life like yeah, you, yeah, you found your purpose yeah yeah, yeah 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 aside from that just my, my my regular health like yeah there's a chance that something can go wrong to spine surgery right yep. yeah so terrifying yep. shit. did you did you feel any different like when you as your scoliosis was getting worse, did you feel? As no, a, not at all. I didn't. Okay. It didn't. You felt like a completely normal person. Yeah, I, I, it didn't bother me in the wow. slightest. Like I didn't even notice that it got worse. I was like, oh, all right, that's pretty interesting. And then I was, I, I didn't, even when he told me, I was like, oh, cool, in forty nine degrees, right? whatever. Well, that means, but yeah. All right. And then he's like, no, we have to get surgery. And I was like, whoa, 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 yeah. wait, wait, whoa, whoa. time out. Let's talk about this for a second. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what was um? So surgery obviously went well, right? Um, <laughs> As well as it could. It, it did, no, it went well. I yeah. was just an idiot. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I got the surgery, in, like, right after my 16th birthday, like, five days after my 16th birthday. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was out of school for basically the rest of the year. But uh, post-surgery, like, waking up, the scariest, un, like, traumatizing, scary, scary. I wake up, and I'm like, because, you know, when you go, you go under, you're, like, you just, you're, you're just sleeping, and you wake up one time. You're like, yep. That was quick. Yep. What the? So I wake up, and I'm like, where am I? I go back to sleep. I wake up. Where the hell? Yeah. And I, I'm like, why do I, why I keep waking up but falling asleep right away? I'm like, it's so frustrating. I'm like, I'm trying to have a come up. I'm like, I see my mom. I'm like, mom, uh, oh, what's up? 
Like I'm like, this is like, pissing me off. Like I yeah. can't, I can't even get a thought going because I'm, I keep knocking back out. I'm, and I'm in different rooms every time I knock out. Sometimes there's people there. Sometimes there's nobody there. Yeah. Yep. Like, finally it wears off and then I wake up and I'm like, so that was just the anesthesia yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then I finally wake up and everybody's there. Well, my mom and the doctors and stuff. And I'm like, okay, finally I can have a conversation now, but I mm-hmm. cannot move. Like it hurts so bad to, I can't move at all. Like move, like not like, like, like arms and like, le- like just move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm anything. in the bed and I'm like, oh, I feel yeah. like a truck hit me. I feel so sore. Well, yeah. It's spine surgery. I'm like, oh, I can't. And I spend the entire week in the hospital. I didn't, I ate a bite of bread. Yeah. Like a bite of bread. And I grabbed, I, I, I left that hospital 120 something pounds, 511. Yeah. You look at what you go in at? What you go in as? 130, 135 around there. And then lost like 10, 15 pounds just sitting in the bed. Yeah, that's tall too. Yeah, exactly. I had 120 pounds at 511. You need because you were in that much pain. I I had zero. I think that anesthesia messes with your appetite. So I had zero appetite. Uh, The the thought of food was making me grossed out. But then they had to like, do PT slowly on me just to be able to walk because I eventually I'm only staying there for a, for a week and then eventually yep. got to go home. Uh, do PT to start walking and stuff like that. I only was able to really walk. What was down it like? Hall. What was it like the first time you had to get out of the bed? It was terrifying. I was, I I was so it. scared. I was just scared that I mean, I don't know what your the, spine's yeah, gonna exactly. Yeah, exactly. I was yeah. like, oh, cause this is crazy. and it hurt so bad yeah. that I was like, so every step was like, and then it was in the city. The surgery. Yeah. My dad had to drive me back up an hour and change north to home. How many potholes are in New York yeah, City? Yeah, yeah. He has to watch every single one. And I'm like, it's the most painful car ride oh, back shit. ever. That's wild, dude. Yeah, and then I get back home. A week later, I start feeling a little bit better where I can move a little bit. But it was, my mom's giving me showers. Like, yeah. That's how bad it was, bro. I wear like a freaking bathing Ugh. suit or something. My mom has to give me a bath because I can't, I can't do it. What are you, are you walking like with a walker? No, I'm, 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 I'm I was just too stubborn to take one of those. But yeah. I'm just like walking very slow, holding onto walls and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but again, like. Demoralizing. Probably not sleeping well. No, not, I had yeah. to get a thing that blows up to, to incline you. Yep. And so I, so I was like, I couldn't sleep flat. I had to sleep like sitting up. Yep. So, <laughs> just, so yeah. how long did that go on for? For the that went on for about a month. That that I was feeling pretty crappy. Towards the end of that month, I was like, all right, and I can walk now. I'm walking normal. And then as soon as I start walking normal, that's when I start doing stupid stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, yo, I feel good. I feel yeah, good. And, yeah, and we, have yeah, tram- we, have, we have two trampolines in our backyard. <laughs> like me and my, I have two brothers. Well, actually, that was in the documentary, I think. Yeah, two, yeah, yeah. I have two younger brothers. Yeah. And we would just do crazy stuff, jumping off the deck onto the trampoline. We had a pool. We, we replaced the pool, got rid of the pool, put the trampoline where the pool was. Uh, jumping yeah. off the deck onto the trampoline. Oh, so we, that's what I was doing before. And then, all right, I'm feeling better now. And we started jumping on the trampoline. And you see in the documentary, I'm doing backflips and stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I feel good now. Jumping from one trampoline and flipping to the other one. I was like, let's go. I start skateboarding stuff. And then I was three months later, I was like, I think I'm good to go back to training. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think I think I'm good. Oh, my mom and dad were like, all right, if you think you're good, as the doctor said not to. But they, what timeline did they give <laughs> you? Yeah, I was about to, I was yeah. about to not, not until that I come back and see them again, which is probably, you no, know, he told me never to go back to training, first of all. Oh. Yeah, he said, he said you weren't going to be able to train anymore. That, that uh, rewinding back, he told uh, me that in, in the office. I was like, "What do you mean not anymore?" He's like, "So even if the surgery successful, yeah, no more yeah, training." Yeah, doesn't want me, oh, doesn't want me to train wild, anymore. Dude. Doesn't want me to train anymore. I was like, "He's like, it's too much on your body, like with, with the surgery and stuff like that." He's like, and it, it's, it, "I just prefer if you not do that." Mm. I was like, "Which is reasonable." I mean, it's I mean, a reasonable. Yeah, it's hundred percent. I, I get. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Especially people, like people are like us. He's a doctor, are like, like, Bodies are going to meet the demand. Like, that's what we're thinking. Exactly, we're exactly, like, demand exactly. more of the body, the body responds. And body I'm 16 builds. years old, bro. Like, yeah. what 16-year-old yeah. is not stupid, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Every exactly. year, you're, you're automatically stupid. For I, still, <laughs> exactly. I, I still regret not wearing my retainer, so. Yeah, <laughs> same yeah. thing. Yeah, so, he, so he's telling thing. me that. Same and then, <laughs> Yeah, same thing. <laughs> Training MMA after scoliosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, three months after you went back, I go back to training. I'm what like, you, I'm feeling like, good. Like, what's mom and dad? What, what are what are their temperaments when you go when you well, start training? Like, you go from hey, I really like WWE uh, to okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. They're super supportive. Super, yeah. so always been super supportive. Um, I was doing disclosures pretty, pretty uh, I don't know what the word is. It's just the opposite of MMA. Yeah. I used to do in high school. I didn't do any other team sports, but I did diving in high school. Okay. Yeah. Nobody would ever think that I would do that. But yeah, I did that because I was actually sick, I was actually good at it. So yeah. that's why I, I did that. Yeah, I had to wear the speedo and everything like that. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, a sick sport. Though. Yeah, 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 it's cool. It's just like it's funny because you nobody would ever guess that that's that's, that's the sport. So, yeah. so I did that. I was really good at it. My mom and dad wanted me to stay in it because they're like, you can potentially get a scholarship and go to college. Yeah. So I was like, and they were big in school, so I was just like, Ugh. ended up purposely. I'm jumping all over the place. No, you're good. So I'll get back to that in a second. But um, so they've been super supportive. I go back to training and uh, 
a couple of days going by and I f I'm feeling good. Then mm -hmm. a couple of weeks go by. One one day a guy goes for a shoulders under the legs pass. I don't know if you guys know. Mm -hmm. Shoulders under the legs, fold the guy in half, yeah, pass. Yeah. Yep. And when he brings the, brings my knees to to my shoulders uh. and my from my tailbone to my neck cracks like a deck of cards. Like, I was, oh. he's like, oh my god, he like, gets off me. He's like, oh, you okay? You okay? I'm like, ah, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm like, one second. Oh. He's like, what is that? I'm like, you hear that too? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what? It like my back just oh, cracking no. every time I straighten. I was like, oh, my heart dropped. I'm like, oh man. Does it so, hurt? It didn't hurt. Okay. It just, I mean, it hurt when he folded me in half, but yeah. it, did, it didn't hurt after that. I was like, what the heck? What? what? Yeah. So my heart dropped. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, bro. Worst case scenario, I'm thinking. So I go back to the doctor because I told my mom, like, mm -hmm. right, we have to go back for a follow up. I didn't train for a couple of days, and then he's like just pissed you can see he's mad yeah, he's like yeah, do yeah. all the work i did it, like i told you not to do anything i'm an artist you're jumping on trampolines you're going skateboarding and you're doing the the, the sport i told you to never do again he's like what what do you think he's pissed and i'm like dude i'm i'm pissed so what what, what yeah. tell me what you got to tell me he's like we probably gonna have to, yes, i did an mri and x-ray he's like you the, the, the spine the rods shifted off your spine we're probably gonna have to do surgery again i'm like Oh no, my no, God. no, 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 yeah, exactly. That's, dude, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I start sweating. I'm like, what, what else can we do? What else can we do? He's like, you're going to do nothing for a month mm -hmm. and then we're going to revisit this and we're going to see it, how reset? it looks. Exactly. So, so we, I, I didn't do shit for that month. I did. I was like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> nothing, nothing, mm -hmm. I'm, nothing. I'll go for walks or whatever. But, um, he, we do another extra area MRI and he's like, all right, good news. Your spine is, it's, is uh, fused. The, uh -huh. the, the rods are fused to your spines. So yep. they're, they're locked in. I was like, Whew. All right, yeah. Holy. So that's, so <laughs> that's what it, so my, my dad's had spinal fusion. Um, so that's what it was. So it almost, it, it was almost like the, the bone hadn't healed. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's so stupid, so stupid. Yeah, like again, so bro, stupid. That was your, hindsight. that was literally your vertebrae yeah. cracking against the rod. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's Dude. Just wow. so, so I mean, stupid. Realistically, so stupid. if he would just have explained that maybe 16 year old Shane wouldn't have done. Like if he was like, maybe. listen, yeah. you, need, you need to take this month off yeah. because yeah. if this you don't, the the uh, yeah I, I probably needed the like this is what's gonna happen if you don't yeah like yeah, the rod exactly, won't the rod exactly. won't fuse Dude, like, as soon as I started feeling good to walk I was like I'm on the trampoline I'm yeah, outside you're like, oh, yeah. you're like I'm yeah. healed like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. So, so and dumb. it was so like it seemed like it was so close like maybe if you had waited an extra month or two maybe yeah, it would have yeah, fused probably, anyway <laughs> yeah. Dude, I cannot yeah. imagine that from it happening in training the you you having to sit there the next like three four days whatever it was oh, to, yeah, to the docs yeah. like that's gotta be yeah. fucking that'd be and then and then it's it healed and then uh i again i went right back to training as soon as he didn't say go back to training at all he didn't want me to train anymore but i felt good and he said it fused so i was like oh what's worst case scenario now yeah hindsight's 2020 so it all worked out but mm -hmm. um i it, it came a time where it started squeaking like a like a yeah. like a squeaky like chair or something like the tin man when we do abs <laughs> and at the end of class we do an abs like oh, oh my god yeah, I was like, does anyone else hear this or is this like in my like you know what i mean like is yeah. it, it's inside i'm like i don't know if anybody else can hear this <laughs> this is weird though yeah. oh, that's wild. uh well we gotta finish the diving story though i don't want you to forget that the so i ended up yes yeah, so with the diving uh in 10th grade, um, this is already like two, this is two years into my training now. Yep. Um, I already did my first surgery. Yeah, I did my first tournament. I actually did it at a, at a higher level and I got first place. Uh, yep. I was at a blue belt. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a blue belt. I, I ended up tapping out a brown belt in the finals. I was like, wow, this is great. Let's go. This is awesome. Um, then the diving season starts back up. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I told my son, say, I'm not going to be out of training from like, it's a winter sport, whatever the, whatever that schedule is. I'll be back in around March. Yep. He's like, all right, no problem. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to miss this. Uh, so I go to diving and I'm, I hate it, bro. I, yeah. I hate it at this point. Like, it, once you found something that you want to yes. do, yes, yes, and yes. I'm like, I like diving, but I love this. Now I yeah. hate this because this is this is taking me away from what yep. I really want to do. Yep. So it gave me like a resentment towards diving, and I ended up basically purposely getting kicked off the team yes. just because he kept the coach wanted me to do a specific dive. I hated doing it because I if you, you ever you ever be, like back flop where yeah. you slap your back on the water, yeah. it's mm -hmm. worse than a belly flop. So it was a backwards flip into a dive. So back one and a half. And I was like, I hate this dive. He's like, I was like, come on. He's like, you need to get this one down. You need to get this one down. So I just kept dumping on the diving board and like not doing it on purpose, just doing like a regular backflip. And yeah. he's like, all right, get back and do it again. I just kept doing it, kept doing it. I was like, I don't know, I can't do it. And he's like, Shane, yeah. if you don't do this back one and a half, I'm, we, I can't have you on the team. He's You're like, oh, that, <laughs> that'll work out. I was like, all right. He's like, if you, if, if you don't do it right now, mm -hmm. just swim back and go pack your things. Did a backflip and swam back. I was like, I see you. Yeah. You're like, surprise, <laughs> yeah. I'm back to training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got back. Did you early. ever tell your mama burgers that story or is it coming out? 
on this. Uh, I, she she's probably heard at that at, at this point, but uh, this might be a refresher for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I mean, I have the same. I I believe the the same. The same thing happens in entrepreneurship too. Whereas you start your your side hustle mm-hmm. in, in hopes of making it the main hustle, oh, yeah. and then a job or career you may have loved at one point is taking you away from working on that that yeah. side thing. So. Yeah. I can empathize with what you're, with what you're saying. And even if you love that previous thing, yeah. it pales in comparison to the thing so that it makes you dream. Yeah, you yeah I think I mean? it takes away from the thing that you actually you think you love that, but you really love this. So it makes you kind of have that yeah. resentment towards that. I know exactly. Yeah. That is similar. Like, I was very good at my old job, and I would, like, they were like, oh, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. And I would just be so, like, I was so focused on a few hunt and where I wanted yeah. that to go that I'd be like, okay, like, do yeah. something like I'm not doing that. Do something about it. Like kind of like, kind of <laughs> like a diving story. Like, <laughs> yeah, same, yep. same but different. Right? <laughs> so it sounded like you you were having success early on in jujitsu. Yeah. Like yeah. it was, if someone from the outside looking in, they were they could make a case like Shane knows what he's doing. Like he's having success. He's training hard. Like this seems like a viable option. Had you come out and said like, hey, look, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like I'm going to make a career of this. No, I, I knew I was going to do something in the realm of that. I just yep. didn't know exactly what it was. I was like, maybe I'll be an instructor. Maybe I'll be a commentator. Maybe I'll... Sure. Until I started winning competitions and I was like, oh, all right, maybe, I'll, maybe I will do a fight or something mm-hmm. like that. I had my first fight when I was 18, actually, in high school still. Yeah. Um, I won that fight and then I was like, all right, that was a different kind of fun because uh, the training fun is, is yeah, you, you get a tap out in training, that, that's fun. But when you win in front of all your friends and family that came out to watch you, yeah. like, dude, that's... I feel like that's, that was that the decision point for you when you decided to take your first fight that you were going to do this for the rest of your life? Was it after the win or was it that still too early before you made that decision? No, it was getting ready for that first one. I was like, I don't have a backup plan. I was like, I'm burning all the boats. I was like, this is what I'm doing. And, and I basically lived like that from that point to where I am right now. Yeah. Like I, I, I have other things I can do for sure, but yep. I know nothing will fulfill me like mm-hmm. what I'm doing now. So... I don't really have a backup plan. And I, and I, I hate the word. Like, dude, when I was doing that for so long, like when I was coming up, when, when you're fighting outside the UFC, you're not making any money. Everyone's mm-hmm. like, so I have, a, I have a job. I was I was a head instructor of the gym mm-hmm. while I was uh, fighting, fighting at the same, at the same yeah. time. So I would train in the morning and then teach all night and then train again at night and then do it mm-hmm. again the next day. So, but everyone's like, what are you going to do if, 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 if this fighting thing doesn't work out? And I was like, I mean, I'm already doing what i'm doing so i was like i guess i i would do this but uh i don't know i'm not really thinking about that i was seven and oh at this point i don't want to think about what if that what if that that, that I feel like that's i don't i don't need to think about that kind of shit but that, that's taking me away from what i'm actually focused on doing right what's yeah. that what's the point point? and yeah. they love to they love to get you scared too like what if what if what and all it, the reoccurring theme with a lot of successful people that we talk to on this podcast and people that are doing what they love in life they're not they 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 say burn the boats or yeah. or they don't think about what if like you can't spend all your time thinking about what if this doesn't work out you need yeah. to focus all the time you're thinking about what if it's is wasted. more to, is more time you're not thinking about <laughs> yeah. where you need to go 100%. natural like we're wired for survival and I think people love you and they want you to take a well worn path to be yeah. to to protect you but um, the road less traveled there we go. That's it. At what That's point, it. quick question. Yep. At what point did it change? Did, so I, you just told me, and you're saying it started a lot of jujitsu at first, yeah. and you're winning competitions, yep. blue belt, putting up brown belts. At what point did it go from jujitsu to, to striking? So I uh, fought. I fought a guy, a local guy. I was for a, I was five and zero at the time, and I was taking everybody down, submitting them. Uh, fight this kid, and I go to take him down, and he stuffs me, and he's strong, and I was like, oh man. Yeah, I I've been getting all these takedowns. Like that was like he, she's strong. Then I was like, I guess we're striking. So we start striking, and I'm landing shots. And I'm like, oh crap, I, I can strike. Ended up getting a no contest because I need him in the balls. We do a rematch, and a month later, and I TKO him with body with a body shot from striking. And I was yeah. like, oh my god, yes, let's go. And then literally right after that, my coach is backstage. He's like, now we're putting you in a kickboxing fight in three weeks. And I was like, uh, bro, I just got out of a fight camp. I was like, I just want a belt. I'm like so high. And he's like, yeah, you're fighting again in three weeks. So I was like. Oh, uh, kickboxing fight too! My like, foot on foot on the gas, yeah, man. Literally, foot on the gas. I, I had six fights in less than a year that that, that year. Foot on the and gas. Is that because they saw potential in you? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And then they yeah. wanted me to be even more confident in my striking. So it was yeah. like, yeah, you're a grappler. You just got a, a TKO standing, great. But let's make you even more confident. Now you have no no other option but to stand and strike with this guy. And yeah. I fighting a Phil Crew. You know, remember Phil Crew? Mm-hmm. He's a GSP's Muay Thai yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah. Fought one of his students and I knocked him out in a minute. I was like, 
in a kickboxing match. Was like, Shane the grappler now can kickbox. I was like, let's go. Yeah. So that, from that point on, different 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 level of uh, fun when you knock somebody out compared to when you submit somebody. Submitting somebody is awesome though. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but when you knock them out, like you feel like yeah. uh, like Superman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're so again, the body of work is continuing. Like people in your life are looking at what you're doing and they're like, he's doing it. Yeah. But was there still doubt that people not understand the mission you were on did they say that they'd still try to talk you out of doing what you were about to do my family and my friends in my in my circle that i have super supportive my team super supportive everybody believed in me wholeheartedly knew that i was going to make it to, mm -hmm. to where i made it um it's just you don't know exactly when you're going to make it to that point so yeah. i'm having all these fights and i was seven and oh with seven finishes uh, i only i never went to the third round um mm -hmm. that whole the, the whole story of how i got even into the ufc was a, is a that's one of those like uh, I d I believe in divine intervention because that there's dude that's that made no sense how I don't know if you guys know the story but I I was getting I was ready gonna for, ask you to I was to getting go. ready for a CFFC title fight I was like oh, let's go I'm seven and zero oh. I win this fight I can get I can get a call to the UFC I can get it I can get it week before the fight the guy pulls out I'm like I already did so I, I busted my ass for that training camp. I, I busted my ass for it. it was a five round fight too mm -hmm. so I did a full training camp for five rounds. Week before the fight, guy pulls out and managed the time. He's like, don't don't stress yet. Keep the diet going. Still focus on making the weight because I'm yes. trying to get you an opponent. We're trying to get you an opponent. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, going through a bunch of different opponents. I'm saying yes to everybody. I'm saying yes to everybody. I'm like, I don't care. I'm already in fight shape. I'm ready to go. And, yep. I, and on top of that, I got a baby due. My first kid due. This is October. My first kid is due in February. Yep. I'm like, and I'm in What year is this? Uh, 2000. She came. She's born in 2017. It's 2016. Okay. So, um, yeah, 2016, uh, I'm, I'm about to make like maybe seven grand after ticket sales, dude, mm -hmm. seven grand in a regional fight is a lot of money. Yeah. Right? In my mind, I'm, I'm not making a lot of money at that. I'm making 23,000 a year, bro. Yeah. I'm uh -huh. broke. I'm broke living in a one bedroom apartment. My wife just stopped working. Yeah. I'm broke. I need this $7,000 to me. You know what that Life sounds changing. like? It's it, yes. Life yeah, changing. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The, 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 the fight falls through on Sunday. I take my phone. I smash it on the phone, on the, on the ground. Thank God it was a carpet because it didn't break. But <laughs> yeah. I had to have money for a new one. So. Yeah, I was going to say. So then, um, but by the time, and I'm still dieting, doing my water mm -hmm. loading. Wednesday yeah. comes, they say, never mind. No, no commission is going to let you fight a guy on three days notice at this point. I, bro, I, I'm not a big crier. Yeah. I'm, I'm crying. My wife yeah. just comes over to me, she, starts, she hugs me. I'm, I'm just crying because I feel like. Plus, you're going through it, man. Dude, like I, I, you're... I, yeah, I'm 24, 24, 25 years old, and I'm like, dude, my, I'm, I watched all my friends go to college. They graduated. They have careers now. Yeah, I'm broke, man. Yeah, I have, I'm seven and zero, but I'm, I'm freaking, I'm broke. I have nothing to show for this. I'm a living baby in a, coming. Yeah, I'm living in a one bedroom apartment. I got a kid coming. I'm just like, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. That's how I felt. I felt, yeah. like, I felt like, a, like a failure as a man at that point. Mm -hmm. I was like. Just crying. I was like, oh, I can't believe this. this is a worst case scenario. But everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Did a full five round training camp. Two weeks later, somebody in my first ever show in, in UFC, uh, the UFC ever had in in New York was in uh, Madison Square Garden. Then they come back in Albany, December 9th, which is my own, right after my mom's birthday. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. Maybe I'll go visit that or something like that. Guy in my weight class gets pulled out of a fight. Mm -hmm. I'm like. Okay, my cousin tells me. Some people start telling me, "Yo, no, yo, get on this." I'm like, "Dude, I, I don't get on Twitter and do the call out yeah, kind of yeah. stuff." I got on Twitter and I did the call out stuff. I started yeah. doing interviews, like begging for the fight, and I was like, "Guys, I'm in shape. I did, I did the training camp. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go." And then I'm, I'm teaching a class one day, and I see my phone ringing from a manager, and I'm like, oh, "Please." There it is. I, I just felt it. I was like, I answer it, and I'm like, "Let's freaking go." And then yeah. my brother, my brothers came later to train that day, and my my, my mom and dad came. Yeah. And I start training with my with my brother who's around my size at that time. And he's like, why are you training so hard? I was like, because I'm fighting in two weeks. He's like, we're fighting in two weeks? He's, yeah. like, he's like, where? I was like, in Albany. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, UFC Albany. He's like, no. I'm like, yeah. yes, let's go. And then dude, I was like, dude, I, I went from being like the bottom of the batter. Dude, I was like, what am yeah. I going to do? I need, I need to, I, I, that was the first time I ever like, what, what am I going to do? Like, I need okay. to do something else. Cause I, I, how am I going to support this kid? Mm -hmm. How am I going to support my wife? And then well, look what happened. Like, I'm thinking the worst okay. in the world. And then I go from being a, upset about seven grand to making it to the to the number yeah. one organization in the world. I'm like, it's the roller crazy, coaster, crazy. Man. The roller coaster. It really was. Yeah. Like, was. That was the most overwhelming. Like, after the fight, I couldn't even like, try to interview me after. I couldn't even talk because I was just so grateful. Yeah. Just great, grateful. For sure. I was also going to ask, too. I, your girl's been with you the entire time, too, like through the through the down times and the, and the ups. Yep. Um, it's really something special too when you can when you have someone that sticks with you and like cheers for you yeah. whether you're whether you're down or you're yeah, up. Yeah, you know and she I mean? never 
ever like her, Never her, her family but what's she gonna do what's she gonna do what's she gonna do oh, yeah. he's getting older now you're having a kid what's she gonna do what's she gonna do yeah. um, they're great though I, I love them but I understand it's natural it. if, Dude, I'm, it's if, natural. I'm, if I'm my, I, yes. my I would do the same exact thing for it's my natural. daughter I would do, 100% mm -hmm. do the same thing so I'm not knocking them for that at all um yeah. But she never switched up. She never not believed in me. She said, he's going to take care of it. He's going to handle it. And I, yeah. I did it with my freaking hands, yeah, bro. You know, dude. just pride that shit gives yeah. me. Like, yeah. we went from, I remember we went, me and her went on a date. A date. We went to a salad spot. Like, like she, we were, we were big into working out when we first got together. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I was 21 when I got with her. She was 19. Went on a date and um, went to this spot to get a salad. I didn't get a salad. I just bought her salad because I couldn't afford to buy two. Yeah. And she ended up not finishing it. I was like, you're not going to finish. I'm not going to waste it. I was like, why, why aren't you going to finish? She's like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you, you finish. You finish. She knew that I couldn't afford it, but she, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh. damn. Yeah. I was like, dude, that. Damn, right. fuck me up, Shane. <laughs> I know. Yeah, bro. Like, but I'm saying, like, bottom of the barrel, like, from the gutter, from nothing yeah. Yeah. To, to what I have now, like, yeah. with my freaking hands and my hard work. Like, that gives me so much yeah. freaking pride that I built this life with these two. Yeah. Hard hands and hard work. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hard hands and hard work. Crazy, bro. Crazy. So you take it. You take. You get called up, right? And then you go on a tear in the in the UFC, right? Yeah. Um, and then your uh, journey in the UFC ends. Right? On my terms. On your terms. <laughs> on my terms. <laughs> yeah. And I I seem to recall maybe it was Dana saying somebody. Yeah, I recall that. Really yeah. up. I recall that video. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like he was yeah. like he was like, damn. He's like, we, we lost. He's like, how do we? I, he said like, oh, how do we let that one go away? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that was cool. He actually called me too. Which you, I don't know how many fighters he really calls. Yeah. Like, that, I was like, oh, this is all. Oh, left me an awesome voicemail because I got a random calls. I don't know who this is. Yeah. I, did, I didn't answer. I'm like, oh, no. oh yeah. Left me like a two minute voicemail. I was like, oh my god. It was oh, awesome. that's amazing. It, it was. That's it, amazing. I didn't have to do that. No. Nah. Did not have to do that at all. I didn't have to be like, all right, see you. But yeah. no, he was super cool with it. And then all the guys from from the UFC, like the, the higher ups, they all texted me too. So I was like. That was awesome, but it, hindsight was 20, 2020, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I, I, I'll forever be grateful for the UFC forever yeah. because it's given me my my goal in my life, my my passion in life. So like UFC, yep. I have no ill will, no bad, nothing but love for the UFC. Um, mm -hmm. But for the PFL, the, the the offer they gave me was like when I'm done, when I'm however old I am, when I'm done with this, and I look back at the sport, I'll be able to say this this shit was worth it because my bank account looks like it's it was worth yeah. it. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. I'm saying. I, and that's what I think the guys like Dana and us, like they're not going to hold anything against you for doing what's best for your family because exactly. yeah, they exactly. would do the same thing. It, yep. yeah, if I could turn back time and do it again, everyone's like, would you do it again? Yes, I would. Bro. Like I, like a hundred percent I would, because I need to make sure my kids and my wife are good and yep. they are good right now. Like I'm not, I haven't fought since August and I'm right now I'm not stressing the fight mm -hmm. because I'm good. But in, with the UFC, it's kind of like that, right? I, I, I've been in those positions where I, like, like when I bought my first house, dude, <laughs> In the UFC, I bought my first house. I'm not trying to dog the UFC. I bought my first house. Um, I ended up, the, after closing costs, it, was, it ended up being way more than I expected. Mm -hmm. I only had like three grand to my name at that point. And then my family had a, a, a vacation booked. So I'm like, we were going on the vacation. I'm like trying to pinch pennies on vacation. You know how stressed out that mm -hmm. is? And then I have a fight, at the first MSG fight in, uh, my, my first MSG fight in mm -hmm. November. But I'm like, I got to last this money from September to November. If yeah. I lose, I'm only getting half my paycheck. I'm gonna have to sell this damn house. Mm -hmm. So talk about go in, being in the UFC again. More of that pressure put onto my onto my shoulders, like to perform. I ended up winning that fight in the first round. Thank God. But man, yeah. I was I was stressing, stressing. Oh. Now, when you're when you're in the UFC, so your youngest daughter was born. My oldest or my youngest? Uh, your youngest. My youngest sport was born in July. Yeah. yeah July. So yeah. you were already PFL. Yeah, PFL. Yeah. But what's it like? Right, having daughters while you're making this tear through the UFC, like, and you're leaving it all out there, and you're like basically do or die mentality, flipping the switch. Yeah. Are they like, going to the fights at all? No, no, no. Okay. no, no. So you know, you ha you have a wife, right? Yeah. And you know, she's been there with you for you since the beginning, but now you have daughters now are starting to crop up yeah. during this journey, yeah. this tear through. What was that like for you? Well, my oldest daughter just started realizing, like, since she was. She's only really been realizing what I do since she was like five. Like she always knew I was a fighter, but she didn't know what. I think it was. our oldest are the same age. Seven. Yeah, yeah, they're the same age. Yeah. Seven. So she just now she knows what I what I do, but um, now it's way harder. Like when I go away for fight week, now it's yeah. like she's scared. She I, that's why I, like, oh my god, dude, I can't I can't bring him to a fight. Like especially yeah. with the way, <laughs> the way yeah. I play, I'm yeah. like, I can't yeah, no, I can't, I can't be in the fight thinking about oh crap my daughter's there oh yep. crap I, that scares the crap out of me. I saw I saw um. 
Fedor versus uh, Mark Coleman. Have you? Mm -hmm. This was so long ago. I was a teenager when I saw this. And this is a picture. It's an iconic picture. I'll show it to you later. Um, it's Mark Coleman on his knees after Fedor like beat the brakes off him, and yep. his face is all swollen. He, he brings his two daughters into the ring, and they're hysterical, crying, and just touching his face. Yeah. I'm like, I saw that when I was a teenager, and I was like, I can't ever bring my because he could have won that fight and still look like that. Yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. A cut on your face, my my kids are terrified from cuts, so I'm like, I can't imagine, bro. <laughs> just like watching you, like you and Sean and others, like just as friends, like watching you guys do that like, on the TV bro. is just hard enough. Dude. Like it's like imagine if I'm like, your dad, or like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, especially like to your, your dad, and your, your dad, dad is, and you're that young, like. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that that'll that'll no matter win or lose, that could traumatize them, and I'll never want to do that. So yeah. they stay home. I mean, you got to regardless of the outcome of your fight, like you're still coming home looking the way you yeah, look. Yeah, exactly. And I got to so tell you them, still yeah. have to have that yeah. conversation so I come with, home with them. Sunglasses or, on sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they're yeah. getting, I guess, more used to it. It's really just my seven year old. The three year old doesn't really know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does I your you. wife go to the fights anymore? Yeah, yeah she goes yeah. to the fights. So okay. I, I mean, technically, my kids have come to the fight, but they were babies, yeah, baby yeah, babies. Yeah, like, yeah, like, babies. like my, my, all, all three of them have come have come to a fight when yeah, they're yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll be able to look back on you know like shows like this <laughs> yeah. and your fights and stuff yeah. like that as they get older. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. they'll be, I guess, in a better place to absorb like what it means yeah. and why yeah. you did it yeah. and all that yeah. other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like they don't need that trauma in the moment. No. Yeah. It is trauma, bro. like seeing your dad get, bro, 100%. get beat up, whether you're on the winning end or the hundred percent. You're still I, getting beat up. Yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. I can't. That's why, I, and the girls too, I'm like, nah. Like you I, said, and plus is the way you fight, man. Exactly, like, man. Yeah, why don't you switch back to the grappling, dude? You could have some, clean, <laughs> some cleaner outcome. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, I, it's, it, it just would put something in my head while I'm in there. I know, and I don't want to think. Like I saw Cowboy walk out, like when he fought Mike Perry. Oh my god, that was kid and everything. I was like, that's awesome. That's like beautiful eyes. Like I can't imagine hugging and kissing my kid and then going into the. That's like two different chains. Yeah, the dad that I love and kiss. I love my kid so much. Okay, now let me turn this off and go kill this guy real quick. Yeah, I remember. I remember watching that and just being like, oof, like. Like that played the hardest thing. Like yeah, 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 like, yeah. Beautiful moment, but I don't it know. Was, it was, it yeah, was absolutely not, but not, not for me. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. How did um, so you know you you, the you still had that switch, I guess. You know, now yeah. you're having daughters. Now you're you're fighting for something. I would say you've always been fighting for something bigger than yourself, but like now, like you really are, right? All and, the cliches, all yeah, the cliches, right? They're so true, it's, right? They're true, right? <laughs> we it's talk so, about that all the time. It's like the cliches really become cliche when they actually hit you at a certain point in life where they, they, ring true and they yeah. make they come full circle. One hundred percent. Like I, it, I'm doing this for their future now. Yep. Like I don't have to do this anymore. I do it because I love it. I do. I do love what I do. But yep. I also, I, I, I have a vision and I have. A, I'm not going to be one of those guys that's fighting until he's in his forties. I'm definitely not going to be doing that. Yep. Um, I want to be done when I'm done on my terms. And then I want to relax and be able to be dad and be only dad and do some other stuff outside of fighting. Sure. I will say people without children, I don't think can comprehend what it feels like to be willing to die no. doing something, right? Like, yeah, you can't no. understand that level of commitment because I'm going to do this or die unless you have a family to feed somebody de yeah, that, depending. That, it's like it's all like like caveman shit basically. yeah like you got to go out and you got to go kill that saber tooth tiger because he's going to either kill your family or your family's going to starve so you yep. need to go out and you need to you need to hunt this thing you need yep. to go and do that's that. the way we look at business too it's like yep. someone's coming to fucking like life kill yeah. our family yes. if we don't. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's that, you need that kind of pressure on you pressure like Pressure is a all those cliches about pressure, pressure is a too. Privilege. Pressure yep. is a privilege. Yeah. If you're pressured, then that's a privilege. And also, pressure makes diamonds. Like yeah. Yeah. you can either crack under the pressure, you could rise. Like no pressure, no diamonds, yep. man. That's the thing. Like they're all all the cliches. <laughs> they really like, are. Give yeah. me them yeah. all, yeah. Like, yeah, like because that. we're at this point where we've realized like the people that have said them originally, they walk through the fire. Like that's where they came yeah. from. That's but, where all these cliches came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. We get um, it because we're walking through. I had to make like, a hard decision yesterday, and like someone was like, "I'm sorry, you had to like like this is like a hard part for you." I'm like. I'm like this is why I do it. Like I, don't, I wouldn't want life any other way. Like this is the life I chose. Like yeah. give me, uh, give me yeah. all this. Exactly. Yeah. I don't like when I'm when when it, when shit's going hard. When I'm like fight week is, it's so mental. Fight week. You're cutting weight and you're you're going into a fight, you're doing all this media stuff, and it's just exhausting. But I'm like, I don't have to do this, bro. Like you asked to be here. Don't don't. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like this is what I I, I I I dreamed of since I was a teenager. Now I'm gonna spit in God's face and be like, thanks mm -hmm. for it, but I don't want this. No, yeah. no, no, no. no. You yeah. get to, you get to do this. I get to do this. I want to do this. I ask to do this. Like you worked, you worked for it. I, exactly. Like this, this you, is you this created is okay. it. There's nowhere else you I'd rather I mean? be. This is what I have to do. It's what I'm. I'm 
put on earth to do this right now. Yeah. Maybe not forever, obviously. That's not mm -hmm. my problem. I don't, I don't, um, I don't identify myself, and I used to as a fighter. Like that, that was that was a, that was a problem for sure. Where I was like, who are you? Shane Burgos the fighter. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Not anymore, not Burgos, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just Shane Burgos, right? Yep. Like I, you, fighting is what I do, but I, that's not all I am. That's not yeah. who I identify as. And yeah. A lot of fighters. Have, have trouble letting that part go. It's not, I mean, it's fighters, entrepreneurs, it's, yeah, it's, it's everybody. Like yeah, if you yeah, attach yeah, 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 yeah. like your yes. identity too yeah. much to yeah. one of your activities, all of us, That's no matter true. what we're doing, yes. we're, we're not gonna up. be able to do it for our entire lives. Yes. It will be changed. Change exactly. is inevitable. It's the only constant, right? So you attach yourself too much to that. When that change moment comes, like you're gutted. You the, know what I mean? You, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, how do you react to that at that point? Like. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of these guys, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a fighter, so I speak from fighter, but a lot of these guys wrap themselves up in being a fighter. So once yeah. the, that fight career is done, yep. who am I, though? What do I do? What, 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 yeah. what, oh, there's no more cameras on me. There's no more this or that. Like, the, especially, especially in being in the UFC, it's yeah, like you're yeah. only paid when you're fighting. Yeah, yeah. I always say, I say, you know, your work instills your worth. And it's the same type of thing. Like, you've worked so hard on being a fighter, being one of the best fighters that your worth is kind of like tied up in that. Yeah. And if you don't make a disconnect and say, well, I can do other work yes. that instills my worth as a husband, as a father, yep. whatever yep. you're gonna yes, do next, yes, yes. right? Um, when the time's right, you, you're in trouble. 100%. Man, you're in trouble because it guts your self-worth, yeah. you know? 100%. Yeah. That's one of the things like, JR, Coach JR. Like he, we funny. haven't even. Yeah, yeah we've. Yeah, we've he, been, he, we've actually, rapping, he actually moved into moved, moved down to South Carolina, yep. so I haven't been with him for a while. So I, I miss him, but I'm gonna go visit him soon. But um, he really inst instilled that outwork everyone mentality in me, mm -hmm. where I was like, oh man, that 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 quote hits different, man. Outwork everyone. Like he has a bunch of T-shirts that say it, and like that. I love that quote, and yeah. I I took that into my training camps, and I full full force, 100. percent They leave no stone unturned. When I say well, outwork everyone, I mean like outwork them, not just in the gym, but I, I'm counting every macro I eat. My, yeah, my brother's like, you wanna try this? I'm like, I don't know the macros in it, I can't try it, I don't wanna make my weight cut any harder, so no, yep. I don't wanna try it. Yep. So, like, do outwork everyone is something like, he put that, he like pounded that into my head, like subconsciously, not even on purpose or anything, like that. just quotes all over the gym, and then he always says that, and I'm like, dude, I love that quote, that's something I, like, I'll like. i live by, like I'll die by, and you can translate that to any part of life, yep. Like, but yeah. I took that into my training any camps. Any type of work. Yeah, yes, any uh, type yeah, of 100%, work. 100%, but yeah. I took that into my training camps, and I was like, I'm gonna out-train this dude, I'm gonna out-sleep him, I'm yep. gonna out-eat him, I'm everything, gonna, I'm, I'm, everything. Every, every, every edge I can get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try yeah, to get. Gonna take that's it. the, it's funny you say that, that's the, where outwork everybody gets lost a lot, it's, it applies to things other than in the gym. Yeah. Like people get yeah. caught up in the outwork. It's like just the physical work. No, exactly. But That's, like you said, it's like out yeah. sleeping, out, yeah. out, out training, out, out eating, out visualizing, out, yeah. Yeah. out yeah, praying, exactly. out, everything. out meditating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Add add everything. Exactly. Yeah. I should have added that one though. That add one, everything. That's the truth though, dude. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's there's I more, like there's coach, more to the work. I would like to have Coach Sharon on the show. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Just, yeah. I just sent him that I was here. So. If he makes, if he yeah. makes, he's going to be pissed. He's going to be, one thing. I flew back for this. Not going to be honest. Oh man. I'm remiss, man. One thing that I didn't mention was like how grateful we are. We kind of jump right into it. How grateful we are for your belief in us and his belief too. And like what we're doing um because you were believing in us and the message we were putting out there yeah, dude, before yeah. it was like super yeah, popular yeah, yeah. right we, we, yeah. we started with your where is it, is it here the, everybody wants to eat fuel hunt we started with that banner just hanging in yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the gym and we even elite dude it was all the banners yeah, yeah, like yeah, every yeah, banner yeah. we had was hanging in there that's such a dope story i remember so the cool. first zoom call too like yeah. it was like in the four of us yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we collected all, and we had all the, all the banners hanging in the gym. Man, yeah. I missed that gym, bro. Yeah. It's gonna get me teary. I, bro, I live yeah. literally down the street from that gym. I know. I was like, I can walk to the gym. Uh, now somebody anymore. took it over. Yeah, or? it's another gym now. That's it's, another it's gym. like now it's like a kickboxing gym or something. Should have kept the banners oh. in there, man. Keep he the magic in, going. In his, his, in his home gym now. His home oh, gym okay, is dope. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta. Uh, since his move, um, we haven't spoken as much. We gotta nah. get him on the I, show. We're we're in the DMs on Instagram a lot. Yeah, he's just getting after it. Yeah, good. I would South expect. Carolina I mean, beautiful. he's got a great. He's got a great story too. With yeah, you know, yeah. starting he's, up exactly Elite and everything. His garage, so. yep, and turned it into his massive gym. That would be yeah. amazing. Is there anything we're gonna bring this in for a landing? Is there anything that we didn't touch um, that you wanna you wanna talk about? No. Off the top of my head, no. I mean, one thing that's cool that uh, for me, like being a dad, like especially a girl dad, like. Girls are, my girls are girly. They're girly girls. Yeah. They're girly girls. Especially like my, my oldest one, she like girly stuff. Like yeah, all, yeah, I think yeah. everything that's girly, 
I mean, now I'm saying I might get canceled for saying this nowadays. But like, <laughs> everything that's girly, she's into. Painting her nails, this is no cancel zone. Yeah, dude. This is no cancel zone. Like, gym, uh, like gymnastics, uh, all that girly stuff. Um, but she had a, a mile run two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and she she hates running. Like in gym, they were making, yeah. they were like training her for running. They were make, like all, all the class. They're just running in circles. So like for a kid, that's not really fun. Like, well, I love you gotta that. Get them outside. I mean, bleh. It, they were, I, yeah, I like I look, I'm like, I'm few, sure, yeah, I'm sure the gym teacher got some letters like, don't make my kid work that hard. 100, 100. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. she's running and she's like, oh, Dad, I hate gym. Oh, every Monday and Wednesday we have gym. I hate gym. I hate gym. I'm like, why? All we do is run now because we're getting training for the for the mile run. I was like, that's awesome. I was like, that's that that's good. I was like, you yeah. know, when you're when you're working out, that's how you like you're, you're getting stronger. You get stronger. What, what, what? She's like, I know, I know, I just hate it. It's so boring. I'm like. I understand being seven years old. I do. Yeah. I, I was I was a bum when I was that age. Like, I'm, you make me run. I'm not running, walking, right? Yeah. So, yeah. but anyways, she's dreading this mile run to the point where she's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I hate it. I want to do it. She's like, Dad, can we just not go to school that day? Can we just not go to school? Yeah. And like, the, I was like, you're going so hard, not wanting to do this is making me say that you have to do this. Yeah. yeah. You have to do this. She's like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, she starts praying that, like, she, she, she prays. So she's but like, she starts canceled. praying, God, please, please don't let <laughs> us do the mile run. Thursday comes, she's like, tomorrow's the raw run. I'm like, you know, yeah, you're going. She's like, I know, I know. Mm-hmm. So she's, she's like, I know, I know. Let's not talk about it. And Monday, uh, Friday morning comes, she's getting ready for breakfast. And I was like, today's the mile run. And, and we're, the parents are allowed to go watch. So this is cool. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be there for watching you. She's like, yeah, I'm actually, I think I'm excited about it. I was like, dad, I'm actually pretty, this is going to be kind of fun. Like, you're all going to come and we're going to watch us. I was like, yeah. I was like, I, I can't wait. You're going to do great. Kick up first place. Oh, yeah. She beat the boys and that's the girls, bro. Happened. She ran like, a seven minute mile. Freaking go. I started running the last lap with her. I was like, bro, wow, that's, like that's the, cool. The yeah. proudest mo- dad moment I ever had. Like, I'm getting teary. I just talking about yeah. like the proudest. I was like, this kid went from pr- literally praying that she doesn't want to do this. Yeah. And she just freaking smoked it. I got first place. It. I was like, beating the boys. Realize, do you realize what that does for her confidence? And 100%. Everything? I mean, dude, like nothing else. Like, I, I keep hyping up the whole time. I'm like, do you even know what you just did? I'm like, I keep telling her. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I say so many cliches to Parker, my son. Like, uh, so like the one thing we, you said like it, it's hard. Like, that's like when he says it's hard, I'm like hard is good. Yep. yep. And then he goes, like, I know, I know. Yeah, he's like rolling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel, I hope that one day he's like, oh, my dad instilled all these. He's like, gonna. Things. He's 100 yeah. gonna. He's 100 gonna. One other thing I say to my kid every day before she goes to school is, it's a great day to have a great day. Yeah. And she's like, I don't want to go to school today. It's a great day to have a great day. And then I remember one time she was going to school. I was like, all right, see, you. I love you. She's like. It's a great day to have a great day, right? I was like, wow. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, yes, yes wow. it is. Yeah. That's like, we're so, it's we like crazy. A little, how, we how go through a little pep talk how much in, the, like, in the Jeep, too. How much alike we are. Like, I, in Parker's baseball hatch, we're be great. Yes. And, like, he wrote yes. it back in mind when I wasn't home one day. Like, it's just like, cool, like, shit like that. <laughs> how old were you when you had your son? Uh, I was 24. I was, it's like, kind of. Uh, not ready for one? Yeah, not at same, all. Not same, at same, all. same, same, same. Like, I, I planned to have mine, but, like, I was not meant like mature yeah. enough to have a kid at that age yeah, like I, yeah. I grew up with her but now i'm like man and if i could turn back time i'd do some things differently yeah. for sure but i'm yeah. so i wasn't really proud of the dad at, that i was back then because i didn't know how to be a dad at 25 years old you know what I mean? think you right yeah absolutely. a lot of people don't talk about this especially I mean, dads like yeah <laughs> Dude, I, i'll go like one step further like i don't think dads even when they're older like i didn't i had my my first daughter everly when i was how old was i 30 maybe and even then, like, I still had to grow up with her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you've never been a dad before. You yeah, can't, you, you exactly. can't teach something like that. Not a lot exactly. of people, I don't no think. No manual. No. Take the pride in being fathers and raising strong leaders or strong exactly. men. Exactly. That we do. Or people, uh, members yep. of the few That's, do. I completely agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think there's dads and there's fathers. Yeah. There's dads and fathers. Yeah. Like, anybody could be a dad, but a, fa- like a, a father. Somebody, I want my kid to... Say, that's that's my dad. Yeah. yeah. That he, him. Yeah. Yeah. That's my dad. And then I want, I want her to be like... You're gonna be my husband, like you're yeah, not even close to my dad. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I want our standard to be through exactly. the roof, and I didn't really exactly, think about stuff like that bro. until I got a little bit older. But now I'm happy that, I, yep. like, I'm I'm proud of the dad I am now. Me I really am. I really, I think you guys are great dads. Yeah. I can just see it, but I I was not proud of who I was Same. as of. I was like, I, I guess I'm a good dad. I was like, I don't yeah. really think about it too much, but bro, I had I think about it so much now. I had signals crossed. Man. Well, I, yeah. I had a, the wrong idea of what a good dad was and i have that same distinction of like dad and father like i'm her father yeah you know what i mean yeah. my daughter's father you know what i mean when I to cut you off. well it's funny you said like like not being excited or not being ready um when amanda told me she was pregnant but she went like a cute like like a, i don't know if like like a, Melissa gave you like a like a box that said like oh we're pregnant like she like that but a man went to the doctor's for like a routine checkup and they were like, <laughs> like they came in like I'll pee in this cup just in case blah blah blah. 
And she's like, okay, like, is that like a formality? She's like, yeah, like everyone does it. And the nurse comes in, she's like, honey, you pregnant. And Amanda's, <laughs> Amanda's like, you got the wrong room. Like, <laughs> you were there too or not? No, no, no. Oh, so okay. she, I'm at the gym and she, I, I, I get in my car and I get a text from Amanda, Drew, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm texting her back, like, oh, fuck you. Like, get ready. Like, <laughs> good, good joke. Uh-huh. Like, and she goes, I'm not fucking kidding. Yeah. And like, we always like, joke that that's like out. Oh, that was our announcement or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, in hindsight, I just wasn't ready. I, I wish, I, I said the other day, I wish I could go back and be like excited rather than scared. Like, I was mm. so scared. Dude, dude, I got complete. But knowing, like, I love being a dad more than oh, anything great. now. And yeah. it's like, now I'd be so, best, if I found, if I knew what I knew then, yes. knew, knew now, I, back then, I would have been so excited. If you can get like a glimpse, like this is what it's going to look like. Yeah. And, and you can, if you can get like a glimpse of the feelings. The fe- too, exactly. Because it yeah, can't yeah. tell you. Yeah. you know what I'm saying like you see your kid run that mile, she gets first place. I'm telling you that, but you're not feeling like I'm yeah. feeling it. Just telling you the even story. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the few that are watching and listening that don't have kids yet, even us saying, sitting here saying like, oh, being a dad's the best. That you don't, no, you, you really don't, don't know it, until you're in cliches, that moment. More cliche. Yeah, yeah, you don't that, know that, until yeah. you feel yeah. it. Or seeing my son win a wrestling match or a jiu-jitsu like, match. Yeah. Like, dude. <laughs> Sean said to me the other day, he's like, he's like, I get so hyped watching like my, my nephew doing jujitsu. Like, I can't imagine your <laughs> yeah, own dude, kid. I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I was meant to have sons, and I have no sons. So yeah. like, this is crazy. Yeah. But I was like, maybe God intended for me to have a daughter, so, daughter, so I could soften up a little bit because it's definitely softened True. me up in in in, in some yeah. regards. But I'm like, damn, it would have been it would have been cool to raise like a, a a man. But on the other side, I'm gonna raise girls that have. St- Stupid high standards. Yeah. Realistic standards. And but strength. St- exactly. Stupid high standards and, and self confidence and self worth. Yes. That's cool. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. I, um, you can understand. I, like, I get it, dude. About girl dads, but um, <laughs> when we were. No, I'm trying to keep it together today. We talk about too much girl dads. <laughs> I don't want to lose it, bro. I already I tried can't. To start when we didn't know what we were having, we were like working out one day. I was like, I like daydreamed and I uh, envisioned having a girl. And I'm like, like zero to 16. Seems amazing. Ah, like, like thirteen, maybe. Like, yeah. I was gonna say, bro, it's <laughs> well, it's much sooner. I was now, like, dude. oh my god, I could see myself having a girl. Like this would be awesome. Like, I'll, I'll never have a, a father daughter dance. Like that's kind of sad. Like, All right, so yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, but I was. And then I started thinking about like her bringing her first boyfriend. He's oh, a man. fucking I gotta ass- story, bro. <laughs> like an <laughs> asshole. Like, some I dude know. you want to punch in the fucking mouth. Like, I, I sp- not saying that always happens. I just nah. had a conversation like my uh, my daughter's gonna be eight. They already they're already doing a boyfriend girlfriend thing. Oh, As, now my kids are in Catholic school, right? Like, oh God, they're stand they're holding the line. Catholic school is holding the line. <laughs> uh, they're trying, but they're, trying. they're they're doing boyfriend girlfriend thing already, right? And like, my wife's like, oh, you know. I heard this thing, like, you know, this this boy, this boy, they got a crush on Everly, and, like, they're kind of, like, they're, like, warring about it and everything. And, like, my immediate thought goes to their dads. I'm like, all right, look, mm-hmm. I still beat their dads up. Oh, so, like, we're good. Bro, I got stories for that. That's so true. <laughs> so, Already? Yo, know, my, my wife's like, my wife's like, what did you just say? And I'm like, look, you don't understand. Uh, yeah. I when you're, like, a dude. girl dad, dude, like, that's, that's the thought that goes through your mind. Yeah. Like, all right, look. <laughs> this this kid's too young for me to beat up, so I got to yeah. I got on. Can I, I take Can I take long, his dad? Long story short, my kid was getting bullied by somebody, and I was like, I'm not joking. Tell her I'm gonna beat her dad up if she doesn't stop. I'm gonna tell her, and she told her. She said, my dad said he's gonna beat your dad up. You don't stop. Like, Let's go and t- tell me. Get Instagram message me something else. We can Bro, stuff. But, but the, same, see this, the same thing. Yeah, no, I'm far from that. Yeah. I, have yeah. I have a lowly, lowly blue belt. But I had the same, a similar instance. And uh, my daughter, Everly, is, like, super confident. You said self-confidence, self-worth, Great. right? Those are things that I've been instilling in her. As soon as I figured out I should, which maybe was yes. when she was around four, right? Because I had to grow up a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, 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 yes. while she was growing. Exactly. Uh, so she had a similar instance. Like, she, like, literally bypassed the friend and went right to the dad and was like, hey, guess what? I spoke to my dad, and this is what, you know, I got to do. And I'm like, let's go, let's <laughs> you know go. I mean? Yes, yes, I love it's it. Wild, but it's one of those, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those things, man. It's it's like one stupid of those games, things. win stupid prizes. Right? <laughs> yeah, let exactly. them know, let them know. <laughs> exactly. We could go on. I really, I wanted to hit on girl dad stuff, so I'm, I'm glad that um, you brought it up. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And I think we hit on just enough of it that I didn't cry. So that's good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a win for the day. I almost, I almost did, but yeah. That's a win for the day. A little bit. This is good. This is good. All right, we're, we're going to tie this up. Um, the community, like I said, you're, you're on the show with us. Every single show, you're sitting in front of your likeness, man. Um, but well, where can they find you? They well, know where to find you. Okay. Before that, yeah. what's next for Shane Burgers? What's, the, what's in the future? So I'm actually looking to move into Florida this summer mm-hmm. before the school year starts for my oldest daughter. So it's June now. Uh, so by August, we'll 
you'll be, be there. Down, we'll be down in Florida. You know? I saw the foreshadowing in your yeah, stories. Yeah. Like, hey, this it's is been, good. dude. I've, I've looked all over the place. I'm tired of looking. I'm like, you know what? I'm dead set now. It is. I, all the signs are, are, are leading me. It's Florida. Nice. We're living in Florida. Nice, nice. Yeah. But we'll, like I said uh, before the show, we'll see you there for Growth and Grappling. Yeah, I can't wait. In it's October, right? October. Mm -hmm. October. Perfect. Yeah, we'll be down there in October. And uh, also, one thing that I didn't mention is my oldest daughter is obsessed with Florida. She thinks Florida is the only place that Disney. has these three Disney. things. <laughs> Lizard. Well, she's she's girly, super girly, but she's also <laughs> like kind of like tomboyish a little bit that's cool lizards palm trees and coconuts she thinks that come on, florida is the only let's place go. that has it, it those is come things. down come down <laughs> so we're, we're down there once a year that's at least go. so awesome. yeah awesome. We'll, lizards, we'll, palm we'll see trees. you down there we'll, we'll hook up for sure we'll hook up for sure um so the move big move and uh you mentioned um earlier that no rush to fight at the moment um they haven't hit me up so i'm like everything happens for a reason like yeah. i I'm, I'm gonna be on the super fight series waiting for the, for the date for that i'm assuming around the end of the the, the, the season finale so uh -huh. i'm assuming around okay. then but right now i'm just focused on getting my family situated down there yep going from there priorities dude yeah, I respect first. That. I respect yeah, that. first so where can um as i was saying sorry about that good, yeah, yeah. good stop um where can even though the community already knows where can the community <laughs> find you you guys find me on instagram at hurricane shane underscore uh my twitter got hacked a while ago so i haven't been on twitter but uh yeah that's about it it's probably for the best. Twitter's like kind of a black hole. Yeah, anymore, no, yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah, it's a dangerous yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's dangerous out there. <laughs> All right, gang. Uh, Shane, thank you no so problem. much for, for joining us, man. Very grateful awesome. for your belief in us since the beginning, man. For Always you making nice. the trek down here to yep. Philly, gritty city of Philly. It's a little bit of a ride for you, man. Um, utmost gratitude for you and wishing uh, you and your family the best in the move. Same as for always. you guys. Appreciate yeah. you having me. You guys been awesome this entire time we didn't uh, even go through a tour at hq we're so high paced on these days good, but good, yeah, yeah, yeah it's been awesome yeah man all right i'll leave the uh few with something to remember hey, on let's, do journey. let's do it ready ready i thought you were going to say something you good no, no, no. <laughs> you want to sign no, off no, no, no. wait got, i think you, you want to sign off all right to the few always choose effort over entitlement always choose hard work over handouts and remember no one owns you no one owes you you're one of the few let's hunt let's hunt